first, I think I would like to give the time to Pak Laksono, Prof Laksono, for your for uh, uh, responding the questions. I hope uh, you already uh, read the questions in the chat okay. room. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, uh, uh, Pak Asit. Before I answer Pak Asit, maybe I just a minute for uh, Prof Uud uh, yeah. discussion. I think one this issue of uh, COVID pandemic. It, it uh, it's out that the cost of managing hospital is actually is very expensive. If we have to comply with the standard, including uh, the negative chambers and all of the protection devices, that is very important. And uh, yes, Prof. Adiutarini and also Prof. Diono mentioned as well that also acid that when we talk about the ethical concern about uh, receiving. Uh, resources fund from the COVID uh, patients or government uh, they pay for the cost of the treatment. I think yes, it is it is uh, ethical. The point is when we look at uh, how much the profit, and that is the difficult uh, analysis. So when we look at again back to the issue of what kind of hospital they can be non for profit hospital or for profit hospital. So for non-profit hospital, I think it's, it's not so easy to, to ask them for uh, having profit. They may tend to just to keep the, the cost is paid by the government or by the patients. But the problem as well, if they don't have enough, what we call not the profit, but a leftover, that they, they, may be, uh, they may be not able to uh, achieve the standard because they don't have enough uh, financial resources for this. And then for the for-profit hospital, again, uh, if the, this is based on the owner expectation, if they have to set the, uh, the profit board, say 15%, so they have to be uh, in this kind of uh, benchmark. So if lower than, say, 15%, then the directors will be maybe uh, yeah, uh, fired. So, uh, or maybe the owners can say that for, uh, from COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the profit uh, can be like uh, uh, reduced, say, less than 10% or 5%, but still there should be profit in this kind of things. Okay, I think this is my, my comment. So back to the ethical issue. I think we will talk more about, like as it mentioned, about PPGS um, or insurance like PPGS. I think in my point, uh, the non-profit and for-profit hospital, they, they have to have, I don't want to say profit, but uh, remain or sisa hasil usaha in Indonesian terms. Yes. Okay. It's very important to uh, support the development of the hospital. We cannot manage hospital as a candle. Yeah. So, you know, candle lights. So, if the candle lights, they... they their, their mission is to make everything is bright, but they, they will be like um, like suicide. <laughs> Maybe like if their, their mission is accomplished, they will die. Not this kind of thing. We, we need the uh, sustainability of the hospital. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Pak Doni, I think. Thank you very much. It's, ah, it's more epidemiological questions. Yeah. Uh, I, I think in Indonesia, uh, it, it depends when it happens. During the first uh, early days, uh, most of the more the middle upper class got infected by COVID. And that's uh, uh, <coughs> because those people are, who are travel a lot. And it stays there until there are uh, more, uh, what you call, how, uh, a, even for social mixing. Like in, in we have after Ramadan and, and Lebaran, people go back home to their uh, villages and then it spread to the lower class. And that's now in Indonesia, not only the uh, upper and middle class, but uh, to the grassroots, uh, uh, poor people, we have uh, many and the spread in those class in the uh, lower class is faster because uh, they live in a, a more crowded spaces. So that's, that's what happened. 
and and for uh, I think for the Bu Erlina questions, uh, I think uh, you you have a valid point, Bu, and I that's what I I feel, and I I. I joined Pak Rimawan Sonjo and I'm, I'm, I'm passively joined that, but uh, uh, Pak Rimawan really have a, a strong activism to make this happen. And I, I believe that uh, with his leadership, it, it, it will be sustained. Uh, even even it, it might be a model for different kind of uh, emergency situation, not only the COVID, but when we have uh, infrastructure collapse, this model can be replicated to other setting. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Pak, Pak Doni. Uh, uh, I, I invite Pak Rimawan uh, to give. Thank you. Um, thank you. First of all, I also thank Pak Doni that uh, he, 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 he gave lots of, uh, what is that, color in, in Sonjo. And every time we have a problem at the epidemiology, problem or issues, we always ask Pak Tony and we, ask, we, we, we let him to be, a, to be a leader in the epidemiology. So uh, that's why like uh, Sonjo, we designed Sonjo for two to three years. It, that's because of Pak Tony actually, because we know that uh, uh, the, the development of the, uh, the vaccine actually is, is far from simple and, uh, and we use the evidence-based policy. So any problem that we have, especially in terms of the uh, health, we always uh, consult to our colleague from from the health uh, department, and and they give us the you know they, they can they can give us uh, information of uh, that which one is actually myth, which one is actually the fact. Now this is this is how we build uh, Sonjo. That's why uh, the trust is trust and tra uh, transparency is a paramount in here. Now one thing that we're trying to do actually is trying to break the. The, the boundary in, in which people always thinking about uh, by the time we have a, a problem, by the time we have a disaster, we always ask money to the, to the government. And what I said is that no, that's actually we, what we have is just only resources, not the money. And also the willingness to, the willingness to collaborate. Now, if we use the game theoretical aspect, that will be very clear because in every single coordination game, there is what I call the, uh, the, the first mover advantage. So if you want to make a collaboration, then you have, to, you have to do it first. You have to step in first and ask people to work with you. And then, and then that will be much easier. So in these circumstances, actually, uh, doing nothing is not an option. Now, the question is that, how we trying to translate the, you know, like uh, how we can ex expand Sonjo to, to, other, to other communities. Now, this is one is not easy because when, when I designed the Sonjo, actually, this is based on, everything is based on what is going on in Jogja. What do we have in Jogja? And what, what is the, the culture in Jogja? That's what we use. So if anybody want to do something else, like a mimicking Sonjo, what they need to do is trying to tailor based on their community. And it depends on, again, on the needs from the community and let them happen. Because this is actually many, many people, what, what is mistake in Indonesia is that we always trying to do one fit for all policy, which is doesn't make any sense because we, we are very diverse. So what we need to do is tailoring for each individual, uh, in each individual area. And then afterward we work together. We just working, working together, it means like, uh, it's not necessarily you have, that you have an MOU or anything. Uh, look, because in, in Sonjo, we are the OTP, Organisasi Tanpa Bentuk, or we are the informal sector, basically. We don't have any, anything written or, you know, uh, you know like a, a legislation that's saying that we are an organization. No, we are not the formal. This is, this is a movement. Now, but then the movement will, will, will ensure the, what is that? The, the sustainability. Why? Because in the Sonjo, we don't do anything that is beyond our reach. If it is too difficult for us, we don't want to do it. So, for instance, I, I'm good at networking. So that's why I'm just, I'm just working on the networking. But Tony is good in uh, epidemiology, and we asked him about his opinion in epidemiology. And uh, our colleague who's in uh, GM production, he's good in... Uh, doing, what is that, uh, like a, a virtual fashion show. So he's the one who do it. So 
Why? Because if they do it because of their speciality, so the additional effort is basically minimum. That's why that will keep. But then if we have many people uh, working with us, then we have a huge uh, impact. That's why we use it, what I call Delta Sigma Delta. So in, in, uh, to have a big change, we start from the small change, but we do it every day, but we never stop. And second one is that we have the realization is that this is not a sprint, this is a marathon. So the most important thing is how, not to, how to finish this, but how to survive. So this is, this is the, the way that we have to, uh, to, to do this. And unfortunately, many people still think outside there that, you know, how to beat the, the, the COVID and how to end this as soon as possible. Come on, we are not in the position of doing that. So we just adapt to the, to the situation. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Pak Rimawan. Is there any response from the discussion, Pak Budiono or Prof. Adi Utarini? No. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay. Because of uh, the time, and I'm sorry that uh, it will delay the next session. So, uh, with the end of this session, I would like to close this uh, session. And thank you very much for all of the contribution for the presentation and also for the uh, in involvement in this bioethics uh, anniversary. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.